Hello, all of you vaingloriously wonderful people. Today, October 11th, is National Coming Out Day, an annual day dedicated to support lesbian, gay, bisexual, and transgender people in coming out of the closet. It's been around for a while, and it was established as a way to make coming out a positive thing to be celebrated instead of having to defend against anti-LGBT action and mindsets. And at this point, you're probably thinking, isn't this a gaming channel? And you are absolutely right. This is a gaming channel. But like all things in our weird, complicated world, it's a gaming channel ran by a human being. And that human being happens to be me. While I tend to prefer to keep the focus on the game and not the gamer, I felt it was important to take a moment to finally have this little chat with all of you. But I promise, we will come back to gaming by the time we're done today. So let's just get this out there. I'm Brandon, the creator of Inglorious Gaming, a true gamer, and I'm also gay. It's kind of weird to be talking about this now after nearly six years as a content creator. It isn't as if I was trying to hide anything because I wasn't. It just never really occurred to me to talk about it and it is not a topic that's ever come up in a setting where I could really stop and discuss it. But today, on National Coming Out Day, I wanted to talk a little bit about my own coming out experience to hopefully maybe give some of you the courage to do the same thing. But before I go any farther in that whole encouraging you to do the same thing thought, I want to be very clear on something. If you live in a situation where coming out to family, friends, or your peers would put you in danger, well, I feel for you, truly. And we'll talk about that a little bit more at the end of this video. But sometimes, coming out to yourself can be the hardest part. I know for me, that was the hardest step to take. I was raised in a very conservative, typically very fundamentally Christian environment. As a young teenager and all through college, my identity was wrapped up in that fundamentalist Christian culture. But even from a very early age, I knew I wasn't like most other guys. When I was young, I didn't really understand it. And as I became a teenager and realized that these thoughts and feelings I had were <gasps> gay thoughts and feelings, well, that just couldn't be. I was a good church going boy, and good church going boys aren't gay, or so I thought. I spent my teen years in a constant battle with myself, repulsed by my thoughts and feelings, and living in fear that something I would say or do would expose me to everyone in my life. I thought that if I just prayed hard enough, that if I went to Bible college and became a minister, which I did, if I could just prove to myself and to God that I was a good little Christian boy, then God would take away this gay stuff. But that didn't happen. But hey, Bible college came in handy in the midst of all this turmoil. Despite most of the college being more of a cult-like indoctrination center instead of a place for higher learning, there were a few outliers on their staff. Those few professors dared to go against that institutionalized groupthink, and they encouraged their students to actually think for themselves, to investigate opposing points of view, and to go truly learn. I took their lead, and I began to discover a whole host of theological discussion surrounding the Bible and being gay. Now, it would take me a few more years to let all of this sink in and for me to finally grow up enough that I could look at myself in the mirror and admit, at least to myself, that I was gay. And that was the hardest part of coming out. Finally being okay with myself, being comfortable in my own skin, and not spending every waking moment hating myself for thoughts and feelings that were beyond my control, or feeling that I was somehow not up to the standards of my friends, family, and peers. Now, that's not to say that coming out to everyone else was a walk in the park because it wasn't. The first person I told was a former co-worker who just happened to be openly gay. I know, such bravery, going to a known gay person and saying, hey, me too. And you know what? His response kind of pissed me off. He just said, oh yeah, I already knew that. It's called Gaydar. I laughed it off, but inside I was really pissed because I thought that all these years I was successfully fooling everyone. Guess not. But a lot of other people in my life had no clue. And that was causing problems. As I became more comfortable with myself, and even as I started dating, I still had not told my friends and family. And I definitely had not told anyone from my church. And little by little, these emotional walls started going up. And I found myself feeling more and more distant from the people in my life who truly mattered. When you choose to withhold the truth from people, it may seem like it's not a big deal at first. But over time, you have to hide more and more of who you are from them until you get to a point that it becomes difficult to relate to them in any meaningful way. And I didn't like that. So I knew I had to put on my big boy pants and start telling friends and family. So I started with my family, but that presented another problem. 
I lived about 700 miles away from my family, and I typically only saw them a few days each year at Christmas. And my mom loves Christmas. Like, I'm pretty sure she lives for that holiday. I certainly did not want to be the one responsible for ruining a Christmas by dropping a big bombshell. So I felt kind of stuck. It's really a conversation that I wanted to have face to face, but I didn't want to deal with the fallout. So I did the really brave thing. I wrote an email. Yeah, I know, lame. But I did it anyway. My dad really didn't have much to say about it. Just, you're still my son. I'm still proud of you, but I still love you. My mom, on the other hand, well, she had a lot to say about it. She wasn't ever adversarial. But remember, my parents are hardcore fundamentalist Christians. She was worried about what she perceived as ramifications for the afterlife. And so we talked. A lot. A whole lot. And she eventually came around. Me and my parents were good. It was around that same time that I told my sister and her husband, along with one of my aunts. My sister and brother-in-law have never really said anything about it, so I don't really have any idea what they think. I know that they don't treat me any differently than they did before, but then again, my sister and I are not especially close. Once she got married, she moved away, and we didn't really have much in common, so we didn't talk much. I mean, I love my sister, it's just we're not particularly close. And my aunt, well, she was totally cool about it. So that left all of my friends and peers. Around that same time, I had stopped attending church, so most of the church people sort of just vanished from my life anyway. A few of them still came around because one of my roommates at the time still attended that same church. We will talk about him more in a minute. But I wasn't really worried about the church crowd, to be honest. I was already beginning to step away from religion at that point anyway. Shortly after coming out to my family, Family, I started the new job. I decided that from day one, I was going to be open about who I was. No, I was not going to go fly rainbow flags in my cubicle or start calling everyone girl in a sassy voice. But I did speak openly of my boyfriend when the topic came up. But there were a few people working there that also attended my former church. And that's when things got kind of ugly. As rumors started going around that I had come out as gay, the few remaining friends that I had from that old church seemingly vanished completely. Some of them even took it upon themselves to tell me exactly what they thought of my decision. But honestly, that didn't really bother me. What did bother me was how I went from having an incredibly active social life to being suddenly incredibly alone. It was a pretty tough period, but it was made better by a few people. Some of that church crowd did stick around. Remember that roommate I mentioned a few minutes ago? His name is Chris, and he is kind of awesome. Not long after I started the new job, Chris went off to basic training for the Army. When he came back, he wanted to get his own place set up because he was soon to be engaged and wanted to start setting up a home for him and what would eventually become his family. A few weeks after he got back from a tour in Afghanistan as an Army MP, he called me up and invited me to lunch just so we could catch up. We talked for a while, and eventually he asked how I was doing. He and I were really close friends, so I told him how lonely and abandoned I felt. What he said next are words I will never forget. He said, man, I really don't know what to think about that whole gay thing, but I know you're still my friend, and I know that I still love you, and that's all that matters. And that was a pretty big turning point for me. One by one, a few of the old crowd began to resurface. It wasn't the hundreds of people I once had in my social circle, but it was always some of the people I had been closest to. And those people just didn't really seem to care. They missed having me as a friend, and that was what mattered to them. And of course, as time went on, I made new friends through work and dating and all that stuff. But it wasn't always easy. During that period of loneliness, I tried dipping my toes into the local gay community or at least what I could find of it. And sadly, I didn't really like what I found. It seemed to be a culture that had their entire identity wrapped up in being gay. And that just seemed shallow. I mean, I want to be careful how I word this, because I don't want to come across as if I'm trying to disparage anyone. But for me, being gay is only a part of who I am. It is not the sum total of my identity, or even a really big factor in who I am. I just couldn't wrap my head around a community that seemed to all call each other girl or that who may as well have worn a shirt that read, I like dick and fuck you if you don't like me because of it. I mean, it just seemed to me that the majority of people that I found in the gay community were defined by that one thing. Adding to that, there were other facets of that community that I found very unappealing. Their idea of a social life? Going to bars, dancing to shitty electronica music, 
ranging up against sweaty strangers and buying overpriced watered down drinks. And the goal of that entire scene seemed to be with the single minded effort of finding a hookup to take home for the night. And none of that appealed to me. I don't really drink. I mean, I don't have any moral issue with alcohol. I just don't like the taste and smell of most of it. And I don't really enjoy the company of drunk people all that much. And don't even get me started on shitty electronic music and the contempt that I have for random strangers who want to grind their junk against me. But it was that casual hookup culture that turned me off the most. Now, I am no saint, but I've never really understood the appeal of finding a quick fuck. To me... That's kind of gross. And I was at this place in my life, my former social circle seemingly vanished overnight and not finding a new one I could fit into. I felt really alone, so I stayed home and played video games. See, this is a gaming channel, and I promised early on that this whole long video would come back around to gaming at some point. Video games have always been a part of my life. I was four years old when I picked up my first controller and started gaming. And even in most of my social circles, gaming has played a big part as we'd hang out and play video games for hours on end. But it was gaming, along with the companionship of my dog, that got me through the really dark period of feeling totally alone after coming out. And it has been through gaming that I have made new friends, many of whom I care for as much as though they were actual family. And it was gaming that got me into my accidental start on YouTube, and it's gaming that brings each and every one of us together today. Before I wrap this up, I want to talk to three different groups of people. Granted, my non-gaming videos don't really get many views, so most of you won't even hear these words, but I want to get it out there anyway. First, to the people who might be offended by the topic of this video, let me start by saying, nothing has changed. I was out of the closet as a gay man long before you ever started watching any of my videos or live streams. I just never really talked about it in this setting. So, nothing has changed. But if you are offended, if you're repulsed, if you're thinking, I don't want to watch videos from a gay dude, well, please, feel free to click the unsubscribe button to know that, truly, you will not be missed. I have always tried to build a channel and a community where everybody is welcome and everyone is respected. But we do not have room for the intolerant. And if you have a problem with me being gay, well then it's exactly that. You have a problem and you should probably talk to a professional about it. Secondly, I want to talk to people who are watching this who might still be in the closet. Coming out is not always easy, and it's not always as hard as it was for me. Everyone's journey is different, but I can tell you this. Being able to not hide part of yourself is, in the end, a liberating experience. You finally feel free, but you should not rush to come out until you are ready. And don't ever let anyone pressure you into coming out if you think it might lead to a situation where you were unsafe. But if you do need somebody to talk to, I got you. DM me on Discord, because nobody should have to hide from everyone. And having at least one person you can talk to openly can make a huge difference. And third, for those of you who fall somewhere in the LGBTQIA plus alphabet soup, speak up and let others know that you're here. The people that I was just talking to a minute ago need to know that they are not alone. As somebody who felt really alone through my own coming out, I know firsthand how much easier it would have been to just have one voice that I could identify with saying, yeah, me too. So speak up and make yourselves known. And so on National Coming Out Day, after nearly six years on YouTube, it's all out there in the open. Though, as I mentioned earlier, these type of non-gaming videos never do that well on my channel, so probably only six people know. But whatever, at least it's out there. And tomorrow, we will all continue to hang out, play games, and be part of the amazing community that I proudly call the Vainglorious.